Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Parks Fly Shop. Today I'm going to be tying a fly that worked really, really well for us last season on the Yellowstone River. Uh, it's a new pattern. It was not on our shelves last year. It will be this upcoming season. Uh, this is a, co a Coachman Clacka Caddis, and it's my design. I call it a Clacka Caddis because I primarily designed it to fish out of the drift boat. And what it essentially does is um, it's a very high floating um, caddis or general attractor pattern and it takes some of the design elements from our favorite overall dry fly, the Coachman Trude, and makes that simpler to tie and actually floats better. And the way I, I accomplished that was I substituted Caddis Gold Zelon and a loop wing of Montana Fly Company Widow's Web on a fly that otherwise resembles the Trude. So it's, it's kind of a combination of an Iris Caddis and a Coachman Trude. And I developed this fly because we didn't get our size 14 Coachman Trudes last year and that's a pretty important fly for us and so I wanted to substitute something that would uh, that would work just as well but be pretty quick to tie and much to our delight um, this fly actually outperformed our size 14 Coachman Trudes by a fair margin on the Yellowstone River. This was our best fly on the Yellowstone last season so I strongly suggest you give it a, tr uh, give it a try. The hook is a Montana Fly Company 7000, which is a standard dry fly hook, same as the TMCO 100 or must add 94840. The thread is dark brown uni, size 8 aught. Tail is Caddis Gold Zelon. The body is Peacock Curl. The wing is a loop of Montana Fly Company Widow's Web, which is a hydrophobic synthetic similar to Zelon. The hackle is Coachman Brown and the head or thorax is chocolate brown iced up. Okay, first step in tying the Coachman Clacka Caddis. Go ahead and make a thread base down to the bend. And then for the tail here I'm using Caddis Gold Zelon and a um, pretty thick bunch of it. Uh, if I was tying say an X Caddis I'd be probably using about two-thirds this much and the reason I use this really heavy amount, number one, I think it does help the flotation of the fly a little bit. Um, number two, you know, usually when you're using Zelon for tail, it's supposed to imitate a shuck, a nymphal shuck. I think it could also imitate an egg sac, and that's usually a little bit bigger and bulkier. Okay, for the body, I'm using two to three strands of peacock curl. Here I'm using three because it's a, a pretty low quality hurl. Uh, if you're using hurl off of a an eyed stick, which is usually higher quality, you'd certainly be able to get away with two on the size 14. If I was tying a size 16, I'd get away with two anyway, and if I was going to a 12, I'd certainly use three regardless of what kind of hurl it was. And as you can see, I'm wrapping this hurl over super glue. And I actually have a story out in the current issue of Fly Fishing and Tying Journal about using super glue in fly tying and if you saw there one of my hurls actually just broke but as you notice it's not unwinding um, that's the big benefit of super glue you have to use super glue or thread or wire or something to reinforce peacock to keep it from unraveling after the first fish and as you can see uh, that super glue does a very good job of holding it together and it actually doesn't really mat down the fibers very much. If I was to put super glue right on top, that would be a different story. But as long as you wrap the materials into the super glue and you don't really have a big glob of super glue on the hook, and as long as you don't squeeze down on the body, uh, that super glue isn't going to show on the finished product. Now, for the wing, I'm using Montana Fly Company Widow's Web in white. Um, tie this fly as sort of an attractor in this Coachman version, which is by far the most popular um, with the fish and with our customers. I tie it with uh, lime green dubbing, I tie it with purple dubbing, uh, and that's all with the white wings. And then I use tan dubbing or olive dubbing for um, with tan widow's web as a more imitative caddis. And I'm using the widow's web instead of Zelon because it's a little straighter and I am a contract fly designer for Montana Fly Company and I like to use their products as much as possible because of that. Now when I create my loop wing, as hopefully you saw there, I put my fingers on the middle of the bundle of fibers and then fold it over. Uh, you'll see instructions for loop wings using a scissor point or a, a pin, 
you know, your bodkin pin, or something like that to, to create the fold. But I use my fingers because it creates more of an oval shape uh, rather than a very sharp fold, and that creates a broader profile wing. Now I want that wing to extend roughly a third of the way down the, uh, the tail. And I first hold that in my right hand and make a very loose wrap over the top, switch hands, and then tighten down. The reason I do it that way is to keep that wing from spinning around the hook clockwise with the thread tension, uh, which I think can sometimes happen if I try to switch hands and tie it in with tight wraps just to start with. I'm going to cover over those, those butts there. And it doesn't have to be entirely smooth since I am wrapping dubbing over the top of this. For my hackle, I'm using Coachman Brown. And I often use fairly low grade saddle hackle. Uh, pretty much any of the genetic hackle nowadays is going to be plenty good enough in terms of barbs, barb density, barb length, uh, lack of web. But the cheaper stuff nowadays tends to have a little bit more variation to it. You may or not, may not be able to see this, but there's a darker core to this feather, um, which some would see as a flaw, but I actually like a little bit of variation in the feather because things in nature are not perfect. Uh, a little bit of variation creates more, move, more illusion of movement, looks more alive. Now for the head or thorax of this fly, I'm going to use a little bit of chocolate brown eye stub. Um, not very very thick on that. I've got a fairly th heavy head already with the wing butts there and basically all you're trying to do is color the thread and create a little bit more color and flash underneath the uh, underneath the hackle. Now before I wind that dubbing, put another drop of head cement right on top the wing butts. That's going to secure those wing butts and also the dubbing I'm wrapping over them and keep that fly from falling apart after just a couple fish. I use super glue a lot in my fly tying. Now for the hackle, I'm going to use, make about four turns, four to five turns, and the reason I do that, um, I'm not making touching turns, turns with the hackle, I want that dubbing to show through. The hackle on this fly really doesn't do much in terms of the flotation of the fly. It's mostly, the flotation mostly comes from the wing. Then go ahead and make a head and whip finish. And then final step in this fly, invert it and cut a V-notch on the underside of the hackle. The reason I do that it's going to, that's going to help keep the fly riding low in the film. As you can see now, there's not very much hackle underneath. And so the fly is going to ride essentially on this level in the film. With the wing, this is a hydrophobic material, so the wing is going to be well up. This fly floats like a cork, even if you don't put floating on it. Um, you should put floating on it, but it floats very well even if you don't. I'm not going to answer that. Um, but it's interrupting me, my thought process, however. But if you... Uh, don't trim that hackle, it's going to ride too high and it might tip over. You trim it underneath, it's going to ride flat on the surface film. Uh, very easy to see, floats very well, but it floats low. And final note about this fly, when you're putting them in storage, either in your fly box or in uh, a display case like I'm going to be doing, um, poke it into, uh, poke a half dozen or a dozen flies at a time into a sheet of plastic like I've done here. With a loop wing, if the hooks tangle with one another. If the hooks from one fly get in the wing of another, they can't simply pull free as in a normal fly. Uh, they'll just rip apart the wings or get so tangled that you can't undo them and that that's, does nobody any good. So make sure to poke those into a sheet of plastic or you can even use foam if you have loose scraps of foam laying around. Uh, if you have any questions on this fly or any other comments, feel free to contact us. I will be putting the recipe for this pattern on our website on the fly tying page. Thanks for watching.